Okay, so we're good to go. So welcome everyone, Yuri here. I'm excited to have you with me. I'm excited to join you today. Uh, if you've got any friends who want to join in, who may want to win a copy of the book, let them know and invite them over, right? So just let them know on Twitter or Periscope, invite them over to hang out and let's have a lot of fun together. So what we're talking about today is uh, a little bit of motivation to get your week started and then we'll talk about, actually, you know what, before we do that, Let's talk about the book giveaway. So here's how this is going to work. So normally I was, I was thinking of doing this on Sundays, like a Sunday share but then I realized Sundays are pretty busy for me. So I'm going to do these probably on Mondays, right? So Monday book giveaways. So here's all you have to do to win a copy of the book. So first of all, as I mentioned in my last hangout, this is only going to be available for US or Canadian residents only. So I apologize if you live in Greece, George, or elsewhere. It's just the cost of shipping a book from Canada Post overseas is like three times the price of the book. So it doesn't make sense for me to do that. So if you live in the US or Canada, you are eligible for me to send this to you. I will personally write a nice little note in here for you and uh, ship it off. Um, so here's how, here's how we're going to do it. So it's a really simple game. It's a really, we're going to have a We did this before. It was a lot of fun. So all you have to do is just hit the screen and I'll, and what we're going to do is at the end of this session, I'm going to look at the total share counts, or I should say the total hearts, and the person with the most number of hearts wins the book, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to announce the winner on my Instagram and Facebook channels within about five or 10 minutes after this hangout. So join me on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm at Yuri L. Kame, unlike Paradise which I'm at Yelkim. And on Facebook, it's at Yurielkim1. So again, all of my social channels have completely different usernames. It's ridiculous, I know. So that's how we're gonna play. So starting like right now, like just keep hitting the hearts and whoever gives the most number of hearts will win a signed copy of the All Day Fat Burning, which is a book that is, or a program I should say, that's gonna help you reset your metabolism to lose up to five pounds per week while dramatically improving your health in the process. So there we go. Okay, so what we've been talking about today is, uh, I was walking home this morning after my walk and uh, I was listening to Joel Osteen. Who, sorry, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. Okay, I was listening to Joel Osteen. Do you guys listen or have you watched Joel Osteen on TV? He's a, a minister um, and just amazing, amazing, speaker. I mean, if you've seen him speak, it's unbelievable that he's able to give a 30 minute sermon like he does with no teleprompter, without any notes. It's an unbelievable just from, from, a, from a presentation standpoint. Like it's, I would love to spend a day with him to see, you know, his secret sauce because it's really, really remarkable. Anyways, he's very inspiring. So if you ever need someone to kind of lift you up other than myself, obviously, if you ever need kind of a really cool inspirational message, um, I would highly recommend listening to his podcast. Just check out, just search Joel Osteen. It's a free podcast. It's basically the audio version of his Sunday sermons. It's really, really good. I'm not a religious guy, um, but I completely resonate with all of his talks because it's not just about God and Jesus, but bigger concepts that apply to anybody, no matter what religious you know, faith you follow or if you're not religious at all. So I'm listening to the one today and it was really, really good. It was all about having joy, like having, like allowing joy into your life. And it was so, I mean, there's so many really cool analogies that I talked about in the, in the episode and I'll leave that for you to discover on your own, but I want to just kind of bring up a couple highlights that I got out of it, which I think will really apply to you, is that a lot of times, you know, our happiness, a lot of people, our happiness is determined by external circumstances. So if it's sunny outside, we're happy. If it's raining outside, we're not as happy. If um, you know, if uh, if we're eating well, we're happy. If we're not eating well, we're not happy. If you know, we live in a good environment, we're happy. If we don't live in a good environment, we're not happy. So these are all kind of external circumstances that control how we feel about ourselves. And the whole idea, as we talked about in this episode, again, this is Joel Osteen, is that it's not about what's happening outside of you. It's about what's happening inside of you. Because you know you can have two people experiencing the same thing, 
and respond completely differently and thus have a completely different meaning with respect to that situation. So let's use the example of baseball. I haven't followed the Blue Jays in like 15 years. All of a sudden, they're having like a kick butt season and they're in the playoffs. They had a game against the Kansas City Royals the other night, which was one of the best baseball games I've ever seen, at least from about the seventh inning on. And, you know, you've got, let's say, 50,000 people watching the game. Some of them are Kansas City fans. Sorry, um, this is the Texas Rangers, I think it was. Yeah, I think, yeah. So you've got Texan fans, and then you've got Torontonian fans. Same game, same result, completely different outcome. In terms of the outcome was the same, but half, let's say, half the people watching thing, the other half experienced something else. And why is that? It's just based on the internal representation and meaning we give to that situation. And it's the same thing that happened, you know, with anything. And I think this is a really important message for us to always remember is like, whatever is happening around you, you have to always find a way to shine your light, to bring the joy internally and out. It's not from out to in. So that's a really important thing to remember because if you're seeking outside circumstances or situations to make you feel better, that's never gonna happen. If you're looking for a certain amount of money, success or fame to feel better about yourself or to feel joyful, as you can tell, there's a lot of Hollywood celebrities who are pretty miserable and who end up overdosing on drugs. And I would venture to say that a big part of that is, again, I don't know these people in, like, personally, but I would venture to say, sorry, my dogs are just walking around here. I would venture to say that they are so externally focused in terms of what other people, the love they crave from other people that they've completely lost connection with themselves. I'm just gonna my dogs. Okay, no more dogs. Anyways, so yeah, so that's, you know, it's, it's really about kind of generating that joy within yourself. And some simple things that Joel talked about in the podcast were actually really cool things. Um, like whistling, right? Like whistling and kind of like singing little songs underneath your breath. Just little things, because when you're singing, you can't really be sad. I mean, unless you're singing sad songs. But for the most part, we sing when we're happy. So just whistling, singing, you know, it doesn't have to be out loud, but just at least, you know, in your mind, underneath your breath, can just keep you in that state of, of happiness. Another thing that he talks about that I'm a huge believer in is obviously expressing gratitude. So you want to, if you express gratitude, if you're grateful for where you are right now, God or the universe will take you to where you want to be. That's pretty much what it comes down to. And the trick though, is that again, it's not about waiting for those perfect circumstances in order to feel grateful. It's about practicing gratitude even when stuff is not going in your favor. So, you know, if, if the medical report came back not the way you wanted, you stepped on the scale and it's not what you want to see, you know, you look at your bank statements and they're not what they are, you know, it's about finding a way to, no matter what, express gratitude for stuff in your life because we all have things to be grateful for. It's a matter of kind of tuning the frequency to focus on those things as opposed to the things that are not going so well. Again, two different people, same exact situation, completely different responses based on what we focus on. So while, again, as we're speaking about this right now, in the comments, let me know what's one thing in your life that you are grateful for today. Let me know in the chat. I am grateful for my kids. I love them even though they're a pain in the butt sometimes, I'm grateful for that because they are amazing teachers. I learn a lot about myself and it's just, it's a privilege to be able to raise, you know, three little munchkins. Being alive, grateful for you. Well, thank you, Val, it's very sweet of you. Life, my dog, Jason, yes. My husband, awesome guys, keep it coming. Just keep whatever you're grateful for, keep it coming. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is because Unless this is something you automatically do all the time, we continually have to we continually have to practice this. It's you know it's like a garden. I'm looking at my garden right now, just outside this window, and the tendency for a garden is to de develop weeds. That's just what happens, right? If we don't tend to the garden, if we don't remove the weeds and plant good stuff in there, and the same thing applies with us is that if we don't if we do not continue to nourish our minds 
with the right thoughts, with the right self-talk, then what's naturally going to happen is that that little voice in our heads, that little negative voice in our heads is going to take over. Those weeds in our mind are going to run rampant and they will be our controlling, the controlling factor of our lives. So day in and day out, we want to find ways to practice gratitude, to focus on what we're, what we're appreciative of, appreciative of. And when we do that, we naturally shift our focus, our energy to the things that are great. We allow those flowers to flourish. The weeds naturally go by the wayside because we're, you know, we're, we're automatically taking them out by putting in more of the good. And, and that's how you start to feel joyful a little bit more every single day. It's not like, you know, one day you feel amazingly happy just like that. And it's, it's not to say that there are times when you can't feel sad, right? Because that's just a natural emotion. But it's about having this kind of like underlying, optimistic, hopeful, joyful tone in your life that everything is working out for the best, right? God or the universe or the higher power is looking after you. He's supporting or she's supporting you. And everything in your life happens for a reason and it serves you. And if you, if you approach life and if you approach every day with that type of attitude and that mindset, then it just becomes a lot easier, right? So try to be more grateful and transparent in my life. Awesome, James. Well, again, th that's all you can do is every single day, just do one thing that's gonna make you a little bit better because it's not about comparing yourself to anybody else. That's actually why I'm not a huge fan of social media because it's all about comparison. Not um, just by, as a byproduct of looking at other people's feeds and pictures, we naturally feel a little bit crappier about ourselves. And there's actually some research to, to support that. So it, it's kind of tough. We live in a world where comparison is natural. We compare price, we compare our people, we compare our cars to somebody else's, we compare our body to somebody else's. It's just the way it is. But we need to find a way to kind of fill up our own helium balloon, which is our own kind of spirit of joy, and not let that helium wean out. You know, it's like if you have a helium balloon at a birthday party, the first day or two, it's like, you know, right up against the ceiling, it's full of life. And if we don't keep pumping it up with helium, what happens? It starts to dwindle away. And the same thing happens with us. If we don't continually infuse ourselves with this joy, with this gratitude, with this appreciation, naturally we will just, the life, the enthusiasm, um, that that kind of inner child we all have naturally goes away and goes smaller and smaller and smaller and we end up living a life that is very pessimistic angry sad and and really not on course with you know who we want to be so does this make sense guys so my my challenge for you today yeah uh, my objective for you today is to Express gratitude right now for, you know, just in your mentally, if you will, and just become a little bit more aware of this. One of the practices that I do every morning and every day is I have a journal, kind of like this one. So not this one, but kind of like this one. And I'll take out an entire page. And so I'll just take out an entire page and I'll just write from top to bottom what I'm grateful for. So I don't stop until I hit the bottom of the page. And the key with expressing gratitude is really feeling it. It's not just saying it. Because what the universe responds to is vibration. Okay, so if you say you're grateful for something, but you don't really feel that, you don't embody that, it's, there's, there's incongruency. It's like you're, pitch, you're tuning a pitchfork and it's at a different frequency from what it needs to be tuned to. So while you're writing this stuff down, what I would suggest is before you start writing your gratitude is close your eyes and spend you know, two or three minutes getting yourself into a centered state where you deeply get connected to those feelings of appreciation. So think about if it's your husband, your kids, something that really makes you feel amazingly grateful. Focus on them first. Get yourself into that state where you just, it almost, it almost feels like you could cry. But like that's, you want to get to the point where I, there's days, actually, there are days where I'll be walking down a street and I'll feel like crying just out of the blue just because I'm in a state of such gratitude for like the trees. And I'm like, well, these colors are like right now it's fall. The colors are absolutely beautiful. And a lot of times I don't even notice it. 
Right? We're just, uh, well, I mean, the same for, for a lot of us. We go through life and we completely ignore all these amazing things, but when we tune in and really kind of like get connected into the moment, that's when you can feel that, like you're like, holy cow, I'm feeling something build up. That is a feeling of gratitude that you want to have. In that that's when you want to tap into writing out what you are grateful for and really feeling it. That's the key because when you can express gratitude at that level and do so consistently, it doesn't matter what's happening outside of you. You'll always feel good, at least at a baseline, right? Your baseline, instead of feeling like, eh, is yeah. And as you continue to do it, it's yes, yes, yes. And you just live at a higher vibration. And you just vibrate. Like people just, you, you walk by people on the street, you smile at them, you laugh, you say hi, and you, people just pick that up. And it's, it's, I think it's a great thing to impart on other people. You being a glowing example of happiness because we need happiness, right? And um, that's how you do it, I think. At least that's what I do. That's what, that's what tends to work for me. So what about you? What works for you? Or do you have any challenges, you know, any kind of hangups on feeling joyful on a regular basis. Let me know in the comments. And keep the hearts coming, guys. Thank you so much. Remember, giving away a free copy of the All Day Fat Burning Diets to the person who gives the most hearts during this hangout. So if you're enjoying this, this discussion about joy, happiness, how to stay motivated, then uh, just keep punching that screen or not, maybe not punching it because the iPhones are pretty sensitive or if you're on an Android, I don't know. Um, but just tap the screen. That's the key to win the copy. So my fingers are getting tired with all this. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Well, I'm hoping that you're the winner and I wish I could tell in real time who the winner is, but I can't unless I shut this off. So, um, yeah, so uh, I think there was something that I was going to say that I completely just forgot. Any questions, guys? Any questions with joy, gratitude, staying up when things are down? Let me know. Because, again, I'm not saying that I'm the most joyful, happy person all the time. I'm not. I definitely lose my cool. I definitely throw around the, the F-bomb a little bit too much around my kids sometimes but you know what the tendency if you've got kids is to have the mommy guilt or the daddy guilt for doing stuff and that's that's a whole other like can of worms that can just crush your self-esteem even further and make you feel worse about yourself so just be don't be so hard on yourself that's one thing that one of the things I've learned in my life is just kind of being a little bit more gracious with myself. And I remember when I was playing pro soccer, again, I used to have a notebook like this. And what I would do every single game was, and this is actually the complete opposite of what I've just told you to do. So if I had known this stuff back in the day, maybe I'd still be playing, who knows? So I would keep a notebook of every single game and I would write down my performance. I would give myself a score of, of one to 10. One being terrible, 10 being amazing. In between like, I don't know, five and eight, somewhere in that area. I can't remember too many occasions where I was like a nine, definitely not a 10, because perfect doesn't really exist, right? So anyways, you know, I'm looking, I remember going through this notebook after, after like half the season had passed, and I'm, you know, maybe 16 games in, and I'm thinking, so I have this score, what went well during the game and what didn't go well during the game. And all I could focus on was the gap. If it was a seven out of 10, Oh, in the world, right? That one ball I should have saved, that one cross I should have caught, that one goal kick wasn't as far or wasn't kicked as cleanly as it should have. And when you focus on all those shortcomings, how are you, how are you supposed to feel good about yourself? You can only build on success, right? You can learn from failures, not that there's, sorry, I shouldn't say they're failures. You can, there's, you win and you learn. I don't consider losing, losing. It's winning and learning. Back in the day, it was winning and losing or winning and failure. Nowadays, for me, I don't care if I win. It's more about, did I give my best? And if I did, why? Or if I did and still didn't win, what can I learn from that situation? And you know, I would suggest 
hopefully that you're doing something similar in your life as well, where it's not so much about, oh, here's what I didn't do well today. At the end of the day, in your gratitude journal, is you want to write down what are the successes? What are the little things you did well? What are the big things that you did great? If you had one meal that maybe you shouldn't have had, you know what? You can recreate that movie in your mind. You can go in your mind mentally and just say, you know what? Instead of having that for lunch, having that piece of cake, you know what I actually had was this. And you just start restructuring that mental imagery in your mind. Or, and or, at the end of the day, you just write down the things that went well. Right? So instead of focusing on the cake that you had that and you feel crappy about that, just don't even think about it. Focus on everything else. So, for instance, today, um, so I'm back in my 5 a.m. routine, which I'm really stoked about. The past two days, I didn't get up at 5, even though I was awake in my bed at 5 o'clock, and I had that, it's ridiculous, I don't know if you've ever had this, this mental discussion between my body being half out of the bed on a Saturday or Sunday, for me it doesn't matter because I'm up at five every day, and I have this debate going on in my head. Oh, should I get out of bed? Oh, I don't know, like, maybe it's a Saturday, maybe I should just sleep in. Um, do I really need to get up this early? Like, if I don't, I'm just gonna give me, like, because what I'm working on right now is my cookbook in the morning, so I'm like, if I miss one morning, it's like, oh, it's only a couple more recipes that I can do on another day. And unfortunately, two days in a row, I lost that battle. So in the past, I would have beat myself up, beat myself up, and I would have focused exclusively on that fact. Instead, now it's just like, you know what, who cares? Move on, tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow, I'll wake up at 5 a.m. This morning, I got up at five, cranked out seven amazing recipes for the cookbook, felt awesome, had a nice breakfast with the kids, walked Oscar to school, did some great work, doing Periscope with you guys. And literally, I'm just, Everything that I'm just doing here is I'm mentally writing down everything in my head that has gone well. I, I don't even, I'm not even gonna focus on the stuff that didn't go so well, like the random, you know, angers or little, you know, explosions here and there. So that's what it's about. It's about just focusing on the success. When you focus on the solutions, when you focus on what's working well, you get more of that. If you have a problem in your life, financially, relationship wise, work wise, anything, do not focus on the problem because it paralyzes you. You are not in a resourceful state to create solutions. So focus on the solution, focus on possible solutions. So yeah, anyways, I mean, I could talk about this stuff all day long, but I think I'm gonna shut her down and uh, I gotta get some work done. Not that this isn't work, I mean, I know this is probably actually the most important work for me is to really connect with you guys and to actually show you that I give a damn because I do. And I'm here to serve you guys as best I possibly can every single day. Be a challenge. I was actually going to ask you guys, how many of you guys are joining us in the Green 14 Challenge right now? Raise your hand or just let me know in the chat. If you're not, go to urielkame.com forward slash Green 14. So yes, what is the question? I'm just going to open up my window here. I just want to make sure I don't miss the question. haven't received Thursday email. Okay, if you haven't received the Thursday email, then I would, um, if you can email our support, uh, info at totalwellnessconsulting.ca, or just pop over to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash jury alkane one. Uh, just let us know and we will get that email off to you with the shopping lists and the recipes uh, today or as soon as possible. So. Um, yeah, and I assume you registered before Thursday, which which means you would have got it anyways. But I don't know if you checked your junk mail or spam if it's not in there. Again, we apologize. Sometimes emails, for whatever reason, don't get through. But we will get on top of that. So just email or support info at totalwellnessconsulting.ca. We'll make sure we get that to you. And um, our social kind of, we're just using Facebook for the most part as our social kind of group. Okay. So if you have any issues or any you know successes, obviously we want to focus more on the successes during the challenge, is let us know on the Facebook page. That's where we're gonna be kind of, you know, our whole team is in there and we'll be supporting you guys throughout. So thanks so much. I don't know why this window doesn't want to open. Because it's anyways, okay. 
All right, guys. Well, with that said, I'm going to shut it down for today. Again, let's finish off the bang. Again, we are giving away a signed copy of the All Operating Diets to the person who gives the most hearts by the end of this hangout. So this bad boy comes out December 22nd in hard copy and or hard cover. I will be shipping one of these out to you tomorrow if you are the winner. Again, US and Canada only guys, but you can still give hearts if you live in Europe or anywhere else. Uh, just because the shipping costs were crazy to ship outside of the continent. So I apologize for that, but thank you so much for all the hearts. Once again, I will announce the winner on Instagram or Facebook, uh, pretty much within a couple minutes of finishing this. So I will announce that and let me know. I'll just need your address, right? So I can send it to you. If you're watching this as a replay or on YouTube, remember to join me on Periscope every single day, Monday through Friday, between 12 and one. Typically that's kind of where I'm doing these hangouts. And um, if you want to watch the replays on YouTube, go to the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Yell came, so Y-E-L-K-A-I-M-1 on YouTube. So again, just another way to confuse, confuse you guys our different usernames with every social channel. All right, so I'm gonna count them down. We'll go five seconds, then we'll finish this off. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I will announce the winner in just a couple minutes on my Instagram page or on Facebook and on Facebook, I should say. And I'll speak with you guys tomorrow.